Hello, welcome to NPTEL NOC and introductory course on point set topology part 2, module 62, connected sum and classification of surfaces. Last time we have introduced the notion of rubber sheet models and stated a big theorem which is supposed to give you all compact connected surfaces. The same result we will try to explain in a more geometric way this time. So, I have defined one single notion here. Start with any two connected surfaces. So, this time let us not bother about the boundary, boundary may be there, but keep it uh, far away, okay, even if it is there. Okay, start with any two connected surfaces. Start with two embeddings of the disk D2, the closer disk D2, eta 1, eta 2, each of them in S1 and S2, okay, the two embeddings put C i equal to eta i of the boundary, the boundary circle. Take phi equal to C 1 to C 2. C 1 is, you know, this is an image of this one. So, they, it is contained inside S 1 and that is contained inside S 2, right. So, take phi from this one to be eta 2 composite eta 1 inverse. Where I mean by eta 1 inverse, I am restricted to the boundary here. Okay. Then, the quotient space obtained as follows, namely, you take S1, throw away the interior of this disk, the image of that disk, interior, you throw it away, keep the boundary. Similarly, from S2, throw away the interior. So, you start with two surfaces, now you have made two holes there. Okay. When you make a hole, hole means what? Now, removing a disk, interior of disk, the closed disk is there, the boundary of the disk is there. So, those things are C1 and C2, right, here. So, identify x with phi x, where phi is this map, by this map, namely, for every point x inside C1, by this map, phi, eta 2, composite r universe. So, that is a homeomorphism. So, that quotient space is called the connected sum of S1 and S2 and is denoted by this notation S1 connected sum S2. That is the way I read this one. Okay. So, here is a picture here. Picture may be confusing, I do not know. This is one surface, there is another surface. There is a disk here, there is a disk here. So, these are embedded disks. So, you remove the interior of this, remove the interior of that. There is a circle here left out, namely image of a circle. So, this looks like an ellipse here, this looks like So, identify them like this. So, bring them together like this. Identify the two circles by a homeomorphism. That homeomorphism is not an arbitrary homeomorphism. It is from this circle, see this one is eta 1, so you bring eta 1 inverse composite eta 2. So, there is a homeomorphism from here to here, you identify that. Okay. For example, if you take a disk, remove an interior uh, disk from that, you will get an annulus. Do the same thing on this side, take a disk, remove the disk from the interior, you will get another annulus. Now, you have got two interior circles in both the annuli. You identify them, what do you get? You will get back again a cylinder. Actually, annulus and annulus, they are cylinders. So, but when you identify two of the circles, one circle from here and the other circle from another one, so you will get one cylinder. 
so the word connected sum precisely refers to this one you start with connected surfaces here the end result is also connected there are two of them here the end result is connected so two of them you start but each of them must be connected so then you make them connected by this performance okay if you just join them at one point it will fail to a manifold so that is the simplest way of doing a you know, connected sum if at all but in topology general topology we will do like that one point union but in manifolds it will fail to a manifold so what you have to do is do the trick namely remove a small disk remove a small disk okay what happens the boundary of those two circles resulting circles you identify them the following observations which are intuitively clear of course need proofs okay which we shall skip so what are these observation s1 connected sum s2 is a connected two manifold it is compact if and only if both s1 and s2 are compact okay see there was no statement about this being compact so i could have taken any two connected surface this all all right so so far whatever i have stated they are not at all difficult okay very easily so only because we have time limits here i can't go on explaining everything the homeomorphism type of s1 connected sum s2 does not depend upon where and how you have chosen these embeddings eti from d2 to si the si sir surfaces you have chosen these things right how you choose these disks how you choose these embeddings no problem all of them will define the same same means what up to homeomorphism the same surface so this is a deeper thing this requires some proof not this one these are easy so this requires some proof if you take s connected sum s2 okay s is some surface s2 is the standard sphere what do you get you will get back s itself why because you have to remove a disk from here and disk from here right when you remove a disk from s2 what do you get you have another disk now you are filling that uh, disk back in the gap that uh, you have produced here <laughs> that's all so all that amounts to doing nothing so that nothing is uh, back to home or fit sir so connected sum taking connected sum with the sphere produces no effect that means its identity operation so that is why you know s2 i told you is like a zero element so this connected sum more or less represents you know some additive operation you can see that it is associative it is commutative the only thing is there is no inverse here here is like natural number you see there is a beautiful you know algebra here out of this what are called as cobordism theory so that i can't go into this detail the cobordism theory this connected sum operation is the sacrosanct there so this this can be defined in all dimensions also but now we are learning it in dimension 2 huh? let us denote the torus s1 cross s1 by this simple symbol you know uh, this uh, euler t i will just read it as t and the projective plane by p2 this we have already done okay this was a new notation this is an old notation we have done. let us denote the connected sum of g copies of t by tg what is this s1 connect s1 cross s1 again take s1 cross s1 again take s1 cross s1 g copies okay take the connected sum 
let us denote it by Tg. Similarly, the connected sum of n copies of the projective space, let us denote it by just Pn. Okay. So, again this G and N are coming just like in the in the last lecture. Okay. So, what is it? I am writing here T G is T connected sum T connected sum T. I do not have to put any brackets here because associative. Okay. Similarly, P N is P connected sum P connected sum N copies. What is T 1? It is nothing but T itself. P 1 is just P upper 2. Okay. Because only one copy is there, there you have performed any operation. So, this is notation. Okay, short notation for this long thing. Okay. Now, the big theorem here is like we did after long, long in the last time, but this time we have easy, easily this is the following. Every connected compact surface without boundary. I want to emphasize that here. Compact connectedness, but no boundary, huh? is homeomorphic to exactly one of the three things. Actually, there are three lists here. This is a single element, but this is an infinite sequence. This was an infinite sequence. Indexed by natural numbers. Exactly similar to the previous theorem that we had. I will just show you that theorem which we did last time. This is the theorem. The A A, we have told it is also S2 here. And these are going to be the second list TGs. And these are going to be PNs. Okay. Every compact connected surface without boundary is homeomorphic to precisely one of the surfaces defined by these reduced polygons. Okay. So, this is now this is some kind of a technique to obtain such a result. All right. The finally, we would like to have this description. Okay. So, why these two are the same? I will try to explain that one. Okay. Not a proof, but just some explanation. The theorem has two parts. You see, every compact connected surface is exactly one of them. First of all, take any compact connected surface, you must be able to find them here. Means what? Up to homeomorphism. But there will be two different ones. They may be homeomorphic in the, in the list. No, there will be every element here is a different homeomorphism type. So, that is the second part here. There are two parts like this. This is what? It asserts that up to homeomorphism, there are no more compact connected surfaces other than the ones mentioned in the list. The list is exhaustive. Thus, the list is that, that is the main. The second part is which you may call is non overlapping list, namely, the uniqueness part asserts that members of the above list represent distinct homeomorphism types. Okay. The proof of the exhaustion part, there are essentially two different approaches. The first approach, okay, one proves that every compact surface can be given a smooth structure and then uses what is called as Morse theory. Okay, you can read something, many books are there, but you can read for example, my book. The other approach is the one that we have been discussing in the last module, namely this rubber sheet uh, geometry, okay, the canonical polygons or whatever you want to call. So, let me explain because we have done some work there, let me explain the relation between the previous theorem and this present theorem, okay, namely in the second approach. One first proves that every surface can be triangulated. What is the meaning of triangulation? Just 
cut you may be able to cut it into finitely many pieces each of them homeomorphic to a triangle okay homeomorphic to triangle is something homeomorphic to disk but you would like to think of them as a triangular pieces with three edges so this is the the idea okay the proof of this is not not at all easy the proof of that uh, giving a surf, uh, giving a smooth surface is even much harder actually in that sense all right may not be but this is much more much more harder anyway so so you have to assume that they are triangulated from the triangulations what you can do is you can get a regular 2n gon with edge identifications as indicated in the last module you cut the surface into all these triangles while cutting down what you do you keep a label wherever you have cut down you are introducing two different edges there right so make them all labeled in the same way a comma a and put an arrow also which way they are getting identified so this is this will keep you for the surgeon to patch up where wherever he has cut that's the whole idea so look at all these triangles now lay down them on the table one by one side by side wherever the edges come you know in any arbitrary fashion it's like a jigsaw puzzle when you are doing jigsaw puzzle nobody tells you which piece you have to take first and so on you take one first then put keep putting this uh, uh, jigsaw puzzle try to arrange them how do you do that there is only one rule namely wherever an edge indicated by a letter you look for that letter in one of the triangles it will be there so put there put it there put it on the side keep putting like that readjust the whole thing you are allowed to stretch the triangles whichever way you like so that every every time you have a convex polygon so re readjust that the shape of the triangles that's all so you have union of finitely many triangles and that is a convex polygon so one of the edge uh, extra edge is there you will get exhaust all the triangles you will get a convex polygon okay now what will happen there will be all these boundary edges of this convex polygon they are identified with some edges where are they they are also there in the same polygon but on the boundary now because everything interior they have got their pair okay they have been paired already so these are the last ones which are left out so you will have exactly a even sided polygon two and sided polygon because there must be a pairing and you perform that you will get back the surface that is how the exhaustiveness has been so every surface can be got by a rubber sheet scheme okay now there is another point now you have to say that the list contains all the representatives representatives means what up to homeomorphisms so that is the harder part that we have done in uh, in algebraic topology course uh, course uh, part 2 also you can read it from my book in algebraic topology okay so these combinatorial arguments to cut, cut it down to just uh, canonical polygons as listed last time okay they are justified by one main topological observation what is that if you have made two cuts in a surface okay you can get back the original surface by performing the two corresponding patches in patching up whichever order you want you may or you may first uh, uh, you know stitch this one and then stitch the other one or the reverse way there is no problem the resulting uh, surface that you get will be the same provided you have performed all the stitching back wherever you have cut that's all okay so this is the beauty you can cut as many times as you want okay every time you have cut sometimes that cutting must be stitched back it has to be identified like that saw okay we shall not go into details here but we shall indicate how to get 
12.50 from 12.47 now all right so that is the main thing there are two different descriptions i want to relate them somehow first of all note that list a in both the cases corresponds to s2 there is a here there is a here they are same they will they will give you s2 okay now come to the list b start with the rubber sheet scheme a b a inverse b inverse and some c okay then matter note that the resulting surface s has one boundary component c because this is not identified with any and that will become a circle because both the end points are in one of these so they they will get identified okay which is a circle corresponding to the free edge c if you identify this entire circle to a single point okay you have some surface and it has a one boundary component namely circle keep that make make this circle smaller and smaller okay and bring it to a single point that quotient space is not is the same as the quotient space corresponding to the rubber sheet scheme ab a inverse b inverse as if that edge has been has been shortened 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 to a single point so no edge is left out that's all right so which is now we know is a torus okay therefore this scheme represents a torus with a hole do you understand this uh, this uh, uh, this i will repeat it so what i start i don't start the torus with a hole i take ab a inverse b inverse i know that is a torus but now i have a different uh, scheme here namely there is a pentagon right a b a inverse b when the fifth side is just c when you identify that this c will become a circle whatever the other surface i don't know what it is don't matter but there is a hole here now you move that hole to a smaller make it smaller smaller and make it a single point so that surface is the same thing as as if you have got it from a b a inverse b inverse therefore this surface must be the original surface must be what the torus with a hole all right so that is the whole idea so reversing this argument we see that if you start with the torus and make a hole in it then the resulting surface with boundary is nothing but the surface obtained by this a b a inverse b inverse c so this is the scheme for that all right so this is the picture here so a b a inverse b inverse so that c is there which we don't want so if you when you perform we have got something here this a becomes one so one loop that b becomes another loop a and there are two a a here they will give you one single loop okay or one over the other so this b is another single loop the c is another single loop dot 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 so these are interior to the surface but this is the boundary so make it smaller and smaller is the same thing as putting a disk here removing a disk here you get back this one so this picture is as if you have got it from ab a b inverse b inverse so this is the picture so you can push it back right so putting this making this circle to a single point is same thing as putting a disk here removing the disk from the torus gives you this scheme namely this scheme now what do i do therefore it follows that the connected sum t2 what is t2 t1 t connected sum t right two copies of two copies of torus is obtained by taking two copies of a namely a1 and a2 so a1 is what A one B one A one inverse B one A one C one A two is what A two C two I have to, I have to change something C one I have put here cyclically I can put it right in the beginning so that's what I have done that is trick because I want to bring them together C two A two B two A two inverse B two inverse I could have put it C two here but 
cyclically I can put it here also, no problem. So you have to take these two, first identify the two free edges C1 and C2. You can identify whichever order you want is the main you know guiding principle here. To get the rubber sheet scheme, what will be the one you identify C1 and C2? This is one this is one disk, this is another disk, but they have a common edge now on which we have, we have identified. So, entire thing becomes a one single disk, C1 and C2 go into the interior and you get A1, B1, A1, B1, B1, B1 followed by A2, B2, A2, A2, B2, B2, B2. Okay, this is the picture. So, C1 and C2, they have brought, we have been brought together here in this picture, then re realign the whole thing okay this dotted dotted thing here is c1 c2 one identified with the other the rest of them is a1 b1 a b a inverse b inverse okay a2 b2 a2 b2 inverse this is the scheme for remember in the old theorem this is the uh, connected sum of two uh, connected uh, you know whatever a1 whatever thing that uh, polygon in the list 2 with g equal to 2 here right on the other hand if you perform this one first perform this identification first what we have seen is both of them are looking like this with without this uh, disk that means we are torus minus a disk torus minus a disk two of them join c1 and c2 this time at the last what do you get you get the connected sum Therefore, connected sum of torus with itself is represented by this scheme. Now, a common induction tells you that if you do G of them, okay, like A1, B1, A1 inverse, B1 inverse, dot, 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 AG, BG, that is nothing but what? Connected sum of G copies of the torus. Okay, so this is the sum of two tori here. So that will give you. So repeating this process, it follows that the two lists, list B here and list B there, in the two theorems, give you the same class of surfaces. Exactly similar argument is valid for the list C as well. Okay, therefore, twelve point fifty follows from twelve point forty seven. All right. Finally, let us see two different geometric ways of constructing all the TNs as embedded smooth objects in R3. Okay. There are, I want to tell you two different methods because they are both uh, interesting and useful. In the first method, we begin with the union of n circles in R2 such that C1 touches C2, C2 touches C3 and so on like a chain. Okay. So, they are not disjoint. What are the disjoint? C1 and C3 are disjoint. C2 and C4 are disjoint and so on. So, whenever i minus j is bigger than 1, they are disjoint. When they are consecutive, they have a single point in common they are touching each other. Okay, in the picture below, I have taken three of them because picture has to be uh, limited. You can't take uh, n anyway, right? So, three of them with the same radius r, that is just an extra thing so that you get a nicer picture that's all. Now, put c equal to union of ci, finite union of huh? c1, c2, c1, and let xn be the set of all points x inside R3 such that the distance between x and these circles, union of circles is less than delta. Okay, wherever, where 0 is less than delta less than equal to R. So, this is an open subset. Take less than or equal to delta, you get a closed subset, compact closed subset of bounded subset of R3 right equal to delta delta should be chosen correctly 
that will give you a surface so that is the whole idea so this is a picture here the dotted circles here these are the beginning circles they are touching at one point one after another they are inside r2 the entire solid here set of all points which are at a distance less than equal to some delta, delta must be so these are circles of radius they are so this delta must be less than r strictly less than r it is for the sake of in this picture i have taken for as r by 2 okay take all the points which are at a distance less than r like that and then look at the boundary that boundary is the connected sum of three tori here so if you have taken n of them it will be the connected sum of n tori if you take only one of them circle first thing you have to see is that it is actually the torus okay so that part is just some elementary three dimensional calculus okay you should know some differential calculus to see that this is actually a surface nice surface all right so of course it takes some three variable calculus to show that the boundary of xn is diffeomorphic to tn whereas it is intuitively quite clear you take a circle you thicken it like a wire you thicken it likely bigger okay the boundary of that is a torus so that's what it is okay so in the second approach one approach is over so you have got a model of the surface right the boundary is a surface which is tn so which is inside r3 over no for each n you have got so actually i should write tg here n okay in my notation i should write xg and tg here so fine in second approach i merely start with an equation so this will be liked by say algebraic geometer for example so you can take equation here of course this is all real values in the inside r3 all the coefficients are real you can look at what is this funny equation see the left hand side is just some polynomial and x and y the right hand side is just just so there is separated variable equal to minus that square that's all okay so look at this one there is one special factor here and then there are similar factors here carrying from 1 to n okay what are they the first factor here is x square plus y minus n plus 1 y minus n minus 1 square minus n plus 1 square which is nothing but if you put equal to 0 this is a circle with the radius n plus 1 and the center equal to 0 comma n plus 1 similarly here is center with 0 comma k and the radius is 1 by 3 i have taken the product of these polynomials and put in them equal to minus z square this time i take yn to be the set of all points x y z inside r3 which satisfy this equation 39 and claim is that this represents tn okay so here is the picture is here so how many are circles are there 1 2 3 and one big circle what is this big circle this is the circle represented by this one so where are the circles these circles they are inside r2 x comma y the z axis is shown this way okay so i will tell you a little more about this i don't want to prove anything here namely take this equation on the left hand side just put equal to 0 what is that meaning of that third coordinate putting equal to 0 means intersection with r2 what is that 
if some product is zero means each factor or at least one of the factor must be zero when you uh, this factor is zero you get a circle this factor is zero you get various circles what are those circles they are the circles here the one is the biggest circle okay all of them have centers on the y axis with some radius okay the radius of the first circle is n plus 1 the radius of the second all the second third on the all of them they are just 1 by 1 by 9 1 by 9 but what is the center 1 2 3 4 and so on on the y axis x axis is always zero okay up to n but this has n plus 1 is the is the center and the radius is also n plus 1 so that big circle actually touches the x axis okay so it encircles all the circles here and these circles themselves don't encircle any of them that picture is very important so they are you know mutually exclude you know exclude each other they are not contained you know interior doesn't contain the other circle whereas the big circle contains all of them in the interior so that kind of distribution is necessary all right now what happens look at this area here bounded by the big circle and outside the all the small circles so how do you get that area how do you get any point in this i am not interested in the area as such but points in this domain so how do you get that one they are inside this one means the first equation must be less than you know the first factor must value of first factor must be less than 1 less than 0 and this negative okay so equal to 0 is a circle less than 0 will be inside bigger than 0 will be outside the same thing here okay i want it to be outside here now so they are all positive so all positive one negative so the entire product here is negative whenever entire product is negative it represents a point inside take that negative number take the negative of that that will be a positive number take the square root of that that is your result so that is the meaning of this equal to minus that square okay then there are two two square roots accordingly you will get two points one above here one below here so to take that one if you take the positive thing you will get the graph of that okay that function precisely this part and then there will be another copy be below this minus of that the union of those two circles the, those two graphs is precisely this one namely square root of this one minus the square root of this plus square root of that so that is z you see minus z square is there what is z take minus of this and then take the square root then you have two square roots okay so z equal to something is the graph of this okay there are two function plus minus so that is the union of these two graphs this is the surface so once you know that okay you will see that this is precisely above a point here there is nothing here right because a point here the function will be what is this function this function this, this value of this function will be will be what positive so you can't have minus of that so just square okay this is a real number so this is a real number that is why okay so the, these are holes there you see <laughs> outside also if you come here the function the left hand side will be will be positive because all of them are positive if you come outside here okay if positive then there is no square root minus of that will not have square root that's all that is a trick here okay so it is easily checked that this is smooth surface if you intersect y n with the plane z equal to 0 what you get a disjoint union of n plus 1 circle so all that i have written down here finally this is nothing but union of two graphs z equal to plus minus square root of minus fxy fxy i have denoted 
by all this factor the function the polynomial in x and y this part. So, so in two different ways I have shown that there are embedded sphere embedded uh, surfaces inside R 3 up to homeomorphism they represent each of them represents the class in uh, in what in the list B. Okay. List A is obviously there already we know that list C cannot be represented by embedded surfaces in R 3 look at P 2 you cannot look at the Mobius band Mobius band is also non orientable but it is a boundary that can be represented what is the meaning of that Mobius band we have seen is the same thing as make a hole inside P 2 as soon as you make a hole you have boundary right take any surface in the list C namely P connected some P connected some P n times make a hole in that that surface can be represented by an embedded object inside R 3 not very difficult to prove but I will not prove that near alternatively you do not want to make a hole then what best you can do you can get an embedding except there will be one single crossing along a circle ok that is called a self self intersection of the of the immersed surface such things are called immersions not embeddings ok so there will be two circles in the original uh, surface and a map which will be an embedding except along these two circles these two circles will be identified to a single circle in the image so that is the meaning of that so that is the best thing you can do for all the non orientable surface namely those which occur in the list c okay so this is what i have Okay, yeah. PNs cannot be represented by objects in R3. The saving grace is that if you allow just one self intersection along a circle, then it is possible. Or equivalent, suppose you grant for this one, then you can put this one. Namely, wherever there is a intersection, you cut that circle. Inside there will be a disk, so you remove that disk which was extra then you do not have to cross it all. So, that is uh, how you can get this embedded circle embeddings after removing a disk. Okay. Now, comes the uniqueness part I will tell you a few things. The uniqueness part cannot be proved cannot be I say cannot be proved by pure point set topology. Okay. It is not like you know classifying uh, the one dimension manifolds which could be done which we have done just point set topology you have to bring some tools from algebraic topology you have to bring some you know some invariant you may use something like very heavy machinery like uh, complex analysis you know not elementary complex analysis again okay so, like Riemann did them in the beginning. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, you have to have some high high order machinery here. So, I will tell you the simplest thing is that you can use the fundamental group. Okay. Just use fundamental group. You compute the fundamental group of all these objects they will be all distinct groups distinct means what non isomorphic and that is not difficult to prove once you know what is fundamental group and how to compute these things for that now if you know that homeomorphisms not only homeomorphism if their two spaces are homotopy equivalent i am assuming surfaces connected surfaces nice surfaces and so on nice 
topological spaces if they are homeomorphic to each other they will have isomorphic fundamental groups since the list will give you different fundamental groups they must be non homeomorphic so that is the way the proof is completed instead of fundamental group you can use what is called as homology groups these homology groups may take a little more time but they are much easier to understand easier to compute than fundamental groups actually okay they will also give you that these lists have different homology groups just you have to look at h1 and h2 both of them you have to look h2 will be good enough to distinguish between the 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 list b and list a list c list a is uh, easy to you know differentiate list b and list c but within the list c or within the list a list b you will have to use h1 okay there are h1 h2 h3 and so on they are homology groups okay so finally the big thing here is which is very special for surfaces or just uh, one dimensional manifold it turns out that the classification of connected compact surfaces without boundary is the same whether you consider homotopy types homeomorphism types or diffeomorphism types so this is a very deep result okay so so same thing we have done we have not done same thing we have easier uh, easier uh, approach namely for manifolds of dimension 1 now okay the classification that we have done could have been just by homotopy type right lightly you have to be careful with boundaries don't use boundaries huh? uh, west west connected manifolds without boundary boundary you can later on deduce it from once you have got the classification without boundary similarly here yeah, up to homotopy you can determine the whole thing do you have to assume that they are without boundary otherwise they will have some other problems which can be sorted out okay so we have come to an end of the chapter as well as an end of a course here now okay so i would like to thank uh, all of you first of all if you have really uh, come all the way to the end of this course many people drop out in between <laughs> doesn't matter so uh, thank you all i thank my team of ts who have been especially you know useful for uh, even getting the material in order and all that and they will be also helping you all the time in uh, understanding this one uh, they have been helping you for uh, in the tutorials or what you call uh, assignments and so on right also in the discussion forum so big thanks for my team not only that the the team from nptl they have been very very encouraging and very helpful so i thank them all okay see you some other time thank you